Hello, I am Pastor Eric Gravold of Zion Lutheran Church, and welcome to worship. As we gather today, we continue our journey through the Easter season. A word of welcome to any who are joining us here today. You will find a worship guide down in the description below this video. And so let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close to in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water. Pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow the way of Jesus. As healers and restorers of the world, you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the, loving, by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us for your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? 
the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of your ancestors, have glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made his, this man strong, whom you see now and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than grain and wine abound. More than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you, O Lord, make me rest secure. Our second reading is from 1 John. See what love the Father has given, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take sins away, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare to hear the gospel message. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do your doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hand and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bone as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said that to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus is it, it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to all, in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus spends a lot of time trying to prove himself. And it's almost very unnecessary. He goes even to the great lengths of doing the ancient test of proving something is not a ghost. In the ancient world, in order to prove that you weren't a ghost, you ate something. And if you could eat something, you therefore weren't a ghost. Jesus goes ahead and does this with his disciples. He eats in front of them, and eventually they, their minds were open and could receive the words that he had. And while we can sit back and speak about this in terms of it hard to believe about the resurrection that anyone could do this, 
The fact is, is that so many of his disciples heard every day that this was going to happen. It was among those who should have known, the faithful, the ones who had been taught from day one, all these things who were among the most skeptical. So what does that say about us as those who consider ourselves faithful followers? If you're new to the church, then you might be surprised by it. You would be surprised a little bit by this, but then you would also see that, yeah, you could have these mistakes. But the thing is, is that those who are faithful followers in the church, those who have been there for a long time, are often the ones who question the hardest, the power and depth of the Holy Spirit. The world kind of is going in a direction in which we want to see things in terms of black and white, that there's a right and that there is a wrong. And while certainly there are things that will always be wrong and things that will always be right, the fact is, is that the Holy Spirit still works regardless of the morality of a situation. And that even in the weirdest places can the Holy Spirit manifest and bring about new life. A great example of that is Paul himself, a murderer, self, and he bla and he's open about that throughout the different texts that he writes and the different churches he write that he writes letters and starts. He was the worst of the worst, and the Holy Spirit decided to turn him into the voice of Christ's resurrection. Too often, we believe that the Holy Spirit is restricted only to the walls of a church or among those who are faithful. But the fact is, is that the resurrection means that Christ is not just restricted to one specific spot, but instead has went out into the world and bids us to follow. When Jesus tells his disciples to go ahead to to, that he's going to go ahead to Galilee, he is waiting for them. And of course, they fall behind and Jesus has to go catch them back up. It is key here to know that even amongst the faithful, we have, at, we will at times falter and that we have a responsibility to recognize at those times when we are not following in the resurrection light. The church itself has been the ones who have caused pain and suffering in the world too often, and that we have not kept our ears open to the pain and suffering of those who face violence from different, different directions, whether it's from racism, from different isms that exist in the world. And the body of Christ is called to listen closely and not to fall into the ways of the cultures of this world where power is all that matters. Because we have to remember that the cross was meant to be a humbling action. That Christ was meant to die and that the Roman Empire was going to flex its muscles by showing the people what happens to those who stand up against the Roman Empire. Christianity is not the religion of the powerful, but instead it is the religion of those who find strength in hum humbleness. That in the deepest and darkest moments of this world, we believe in a God who still acts and brings new life. Where we think death has ultimate power, Christ instead raises from the dead. Where we think that violence is the final answer, Christ instead brings new life. Christianity believes that this world can be better. It believes that people deserve better. We believe that our communities deserve better. And we are called as the body of Christ not to act in anger against those who face oppression, but instead to listen, to reflect how are we a part of the problem. Too often Christians think that because they sit in a church every single Sunday that they are exempt from sin. You only have to sit through a liturgy and even the liturgy that we had here today in this video where we publicly confess our sins. This is the reality that Christians face that we cannot do this world alone. That we are sinners still, but we believe in something better. We believe in liberation. We believe in God's liberating love to free all people across all places and times.
as we continue on in this Easter season, we are called to reflect on this power. That it does not come out of some great strength or by the power of sword and shield. But instead comes out of a humiliating act of murder on a cross. That out of it comes new life. And that the ones who were embarrassed were not the followers of Jesus Christ. Because the promise was fulfilled. But instead the ones who were embarrassed were the ones who had power the religious officials, the Roman officials, even the crowds themselves who called for his crucifixion. Where we say death in this world, Christ will stand up and say no life. And as disciples, we are called to reflect when we fall into these traps where sin is what dictates what we say instead of acting out in the love that Christ has first shown us on the cross. People of God includes all of creation. And as disciples, we are called to be good stewards of that love. To share in its abundance and not to withhold it for any reason. This hymn is in the ELW at number 365. Jesus Christ is risen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promised to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God. Like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is needed, where there it is, it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to the national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. 
Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially Rita, Carolyn, Linda, Nancy, Carolyn, Sue, Max, Yolanda, Bill, Glenda, Betty, Jeff, Iris, John, Chris, the family of Christina Rinker, and those we lift up to you, to you now silently or aloud. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we uh, in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us, especially Christina Rinker. Assure us of the peace you have promised that you may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting you in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to pause the video for a moment and share signs of God's peace with one another. Praise to you, O God, for your word of life, creating a wondrous universe, proclaiming freedom from captivity, becoming the song of your people, we praise you, O God, for your word. We praise you, O God, for your word. Your word is made flesh among us. With Mary in the garden, you call us by name. With Thomas beholding your womb, you call us to believe. With sheep of other folds, we gather by your voice. Your word names our death and our life, a seed that falls into the earth and dies, rain and snow that come down from heaven to water the earth, a vine in which we abide. Through your word, you appoint us to bear fruit, fruit that will last, we bless you, O God, for your word. We bless you, O God, for your word. By your living word, we are witnesses of these things. Breathe into us your Holy Spirit. Open our minds to understand the scriptures. Give us wisdom to declare what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Fill us with the strength to love, not in word or speech alone, but in truth and action with every creature in heaven on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them. We join in the hymn of all creation as we thank you, O God, for your living word. We thank you, O God, for your living word. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor to grant to give you peace, both now and forevermore, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This hymn is in the ELW at number 364. Christ has arisen, hallelujah. Rejoice and praise him, hallelujah. For our Redeemer burst from the tomb, even from death dispelling its gloom. Let us sing praise to him within this joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, Jesus is there. 